is the new M1 MacBooks good for architects and architecture students. Hi, my name is Ala, I'm an architect, and in this video we will find out if the M1 MacBooks are good for architects. Also there are timestamps for different parts of the video so feel free to skip around. Because I'm an architect and I like minimalism and minimalist design, Apple has always been the first choice to look for when buying a new laptop. But most of the time I couldn't justify the high price of the Mac compared to Windows laptops with similar specs. Although there are some good looking Windows laptops but, since architectural and design softwares are very graphically demanding, so most of the time I end up with gaming laptops. The problem with them is that they usually look ugly, heavy and the battery sucks and doesn't represent the taste of a designer. But recently I started editing videos more and more, so I needed a very powerful portable device that has a good battery life with a color accurate screen. So when the M1 Max were announced I decided to give it a try because no laptop in the market can provide similar speed in this price range. I was using this laptop for 5 months now so I'm gonna talk about my personal experience as an architect, using the base model of the MacBook Air. Actually the design is not new, it's the same design they've had for the last several years from the outside at least, but to be honest it held up very well. Still a very thin, light, sleek, wedge design, it feels nice and inspiring. I don't know about you, but for me a device with a good design inspire and encourage me to work and helps me to stay motivated if that makes sense. This MacBook is powered by the M1 chip, this is the first chip made by Apple for the Mac. I'm not here to talk about the numbers but if you watch a review about it and I'm sure you did, everyone is saying how amazingly fast this new chips. In my experience, it crushed everything I throw at it. The advertised battery life for this MacBook is up to 18 hours which is insane. I was using this for months now and the battery is mind blowing. I get like 12 to 13 hours when doing daily tasks like web browsing, scripting and emails and it drops to 10 hours when doing a heavy task. Actually the battery life it's gonna make a huge difference to how you work because when it comes to speed most people are not gonna notice a huge difference because everything is already fast these days but you will notice a difference when you can work all day without the need to plug it in. The display is very important for designers and it needs to be super accurate with colors and this is one of the best screens you can find in a laptop. It may not be as vibrant as some OLED screens but it has amazing color accuracy. And at 400 nits brightness it could be better but since mostly I work indoors it's been perfect for me. And that's why I think it's worth getting the MacBook for the display. Now let's talk about the softwares and here is where it gets serious. So I started to install the most common softwares used by architects. So SketchUp works very well with no problems. AutoCAD works well also with no issues. Rhino works very good also. All Adobe Suite works very good. They've just released an optimized version specifically for the M1 Max to take advantage of the new processor. But when trying to install Revit or Radius Max with render engines, this is where the problems start to show up. Because these programs work natively with Windows and there is no version for Mac. So what was happening that people were running Windows on Mac to use these programs. But unfortunately Parallels or Bootcamps doesn't work with the M1 Max at least at the time of recording this video. So you can't run Windows. Hopefully this will be fixed in the future. So I still have my Windows laptops to use these programs. And I'm using this M1 Mac for everything else like everyday tasks, email, browsing, modeling, photo editing, video editing which is by the way works amazingly with this Mac. Editing in Final Cut Pro is the most impressive thing to me through whatever type of video you're editing. 120 FPS 4K it handles it like it's nothing, without even a fan. It's really amazing how well it works. So to conclude, yes it can be used by architects and architecture students, but it depends on what softwares you are using. This is easy for professionals because they already know their workflow and what softwares they need. But for students I think they need to try and explore a wider range of available programs. So for now I do not recommend it for students as a main device unless you have the money to buy two computers. If you like this video please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.